1,400 years ago, the world witnessed the birth of a very special man, a unique man, a man who brought to the world a return to pure monotheism, a man who brought the perfection of ethics and a unique religious law. It was the Prophet himself, peace be upon him, who was the cause that I embraced Islam. By his beautiful character, his humility, his sacrifices. He met friends and enemies alike with a smiling face, while at the same time showing them the purest way to worship God. Allah perfected the manners of human beings in the person of the holy last messenger. The God he taught of differed radically from the notion of a God who required blood sacrifice or any such payment. Salvation was described as a mercy from him, reserved for those who testify to the oneness of God. <laughs> Muhammad taught what was revealed to him. This came in the form of a unique book, which contains the very word of God. So it is about this message that I began to love the Prophet. He built the greatest brotherhood built on love and trust known to man. How he, in only 23 years, was able to inspire some of the simplest people into creating one of the greatest empires the world has ever known has baffled historians. One of the things that really amazed me is when Prophet Muhammad passed away, people from Arab countries, like, I mean, the Arab Peninsula, they not only accepted Islam, but also they spread Islam to a greater extent. How did he do it? What was so special about his mission and his message? wondered, well, why is the Prophet Muhammad so revered? Why is it always the Prophet Muhammad uh, in, with such reverence? And, you know, when you read his words, uh, whether you're Muslim or not, you can see that this is a great man. What was the key to his success? We will explore this and other details in the life of one of history's greatest figures. The Prophet's call began with the statement, There is no God except Allah. The Prophet required that people refrain from idol worship and worship the one God only. He educated them on who this God is. Speak about um, the august nature of Sayyidina Muhammad, the final of those sent by the Almighty. Uh, in light of the, the negative press, the negative stereotypes, the negative media that has come out, uh, we find it important that we must speak about the greatest of Allah's creation, the holiest of Allah's creation, and also how does He interact, how did He command us to interact with those who are not Muslim, because this is also part of Al-Islam. We know from Hadith which is the blessed sayings of the Holy Last Messenger وسلم, One thing that he said is in Arabic خَيْرَ nas and فَعَهُمْ nas, Meaning, the best of mankind is the one who gives mankind the best of benefit. You will know from this statement, he never said the best of mankind is the one who brings best benefit to Muslims. No, to all of mankind. And the most successful Muslims that you have ever find, you've ever found in history have been nothing short of an absolute benefit to all of mankind, not just Muslims, but to the Christians, to those who are Jewish, to the Hindus, even to the atheists, up till now. And this is Al-Islam. Islam is not about a Muslim being hindered or prevented from doing good to everyone, whether he is Muslim or non-Muslim. It is not exclusive only to Muslims. Because why? When you study Holy Quran, one thing you find is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who we say, you say God, we say Allah. Allah is Rabb al alameen Rabb is one who cherishes and sustains everyone. 
He sustains those who believe in him, those who do not believe in him, or in some cases those who believe or those who may have strange beliefs. It doesn't matter. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider, the nourisher, sustainer of all mankind, and this is the belief that all Muslims have. This is belief that is found in Holy Quran. This is what you will find in the explanation of Holy Quran, which is in the Hadith al-Sharif. This is what we know about Allah. So if you know that about Allah, what gives you the right to, as a Muslim, what gives a Muslim to right, the right to not treat his fellow human in any type of manner that is not good? I give you two examples. And I will not make this long, but I'll give you two simple examples. We have one of the greatest Muslims in history. His name is Mu'ayn al-Din Chisti. He was sent to uh, India, you know, with a few of his students. He was sent to India. What did he do? He set up places. And this is the time where India had the caste system, where those people who were of a lower caste were denied simple things, which are God-given rights. But he, sent up, he set up simple things, treatment in medical centers, for those people who are poor, ways of feeding the poor, educating those people, rich, poor, Hindu, Sikh, any type of, well not necessarily, not necessarily Sikh, but any type of person who needed it. Never did discriminate between those people who were Muslim and were non-Muslim. What was the result of this? In a time of perhaps six months or maybe nine, over 10 million people embraced Al-Islam in droves. We have uh, Amir Shah Hamdani, who was sent to Kashmir to, for missions of Dawah, which many people say were missionary missions. Went to Kashmir, a handful of students, and taught the people, the people there were predominantly Hindu, but taught the people things of handicrafts, sewing, woodwork, all types of different trades. This is Islam in full motion. He described God attributes, which include his mercy, forgiveness, his generosity, his justness, and also his majestic qualities. So it was not by ideas or thoughts that I became a Muslim, but it was the experience of an example. And again, I heard from many people I met here in Egypt, uh, how they loved the Prophet and how the Prophet was always described as such a beautiful, good person and all this. But that did not say very much to me. I mean, you can say this about many people and I knew many good people. Uh, but when I began to study the Holy Quran, I found that there were so many ideas and thoughts in this holy book that directly talked to my heart and uh, moved me deeply. So it is about this message that I began to love the Prophet. I could feel this light, I could feel this joy, I could feel this substance of love that is in every word I could understand and that filled my heart with love again and showed me that it is always about love. For me, the Holy Quran or the whole Islam is a message of love. Holding people accountable for their actions and righting the wrongs committed between people. One of the uh, most interesting things that is happening in the UK is that people are meeting more and more Muslim people and people are having more and more Muslim friends. And this in many respects is the main thing that is challenging people's perception about Islam. Uh, because people are meeting Muslim friends, because England has become so multicultural, there's so many different names that people are having to learn, but people are realizing and seeing that these Muslim people, as they have as friends, are the most wonderful people. And that perhaps is the most important thing that challenges people's understanding and their perception about Islam. One of the most amazing or extraordinary things that happened to me last year, and it's a very, very sad story this, but one of my neighbors, uh, who was a Muslim, uh, died in the middle of Ramadan. And he was in uh, my neighbor, just below uh, where I was living. 
And it was incredibly, incredibly sad. Uh, a friend of mine rang me and told me, and I was just absolutely dumbfounded. I mean, he was only 40 years old. Uh, but we found out that he had uh, diabetes and he slipped into a diabetic coma, and that's where, why he died. But the thing that was most extraordinary for me was to observe how the Muslim community all rallied round to help and support him. And also what was very sad was the fact that he really died with no money at all. In actual fact, he didn't have enough money to pay for his funeral. And what was just extraordinary was how the Muslim people that he didn't even know where he was going to be buried and where the service was going to be conducted all rallied round and paid for his funeral. And for me to observe how these people looked after a person who they'd never met before in the most loving, caring way was just absolutely incredible. And we stood at the grave and every attention to detail was made for this man that none of these people knew. And to my mind, that was just one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had in terms of learning and understanding what Islam is and, and the real amazing power of, of the love that people have for one another in, in Islam. But really, when we get down to the bottom of everything, when we try and move away all the misunderstanding, the key, as I have learned, or I'm beginning to learn, is to look at the Prophet Muhammad. Now, most people in the West would not have read what Prophet Muhammad had said. Most people would have an understanding or a belief that he was perhaps a crazy man, uh, or he had some radical ideas, and he just spouted crazy things. That's perhaps what most people would think. But when you really, really get down to look at what he wrote, and what he said, and the way that he lived his life, it's an absolute revelation. And I really see and feel that the absolute key for us to move forward as humanity, as people living alongside each other, in order for people to get on, in order for the world to understand each other, we need to look at the source. And I would really encourage everyone and anyone to read the words of Prophet Muhammad because it is really, truly inspiring. And for a lot of people, it would be quite shocking because it is so good in terms of what he is saying. And I really feel that this is the secret, the way forward for us all, because we can then turn to anyone who perhaps is a bit bemused by what is going on and say, you know that really radical thing that you're seeing going on, those crazy people? That's not really Islam. You should look and read what the Prophet Muhammad has to say, and you would see that that is out of sorts. Those people are not doing what he would have been wanting them to do. So I see that really, uh, the wonderful thing that we have, obviously the Quran, and, and people can read the words of the Prophet Muhammad, and in that really is the secret to our understanding and us all joining together and embracing one another. Knowledge of this nature built a sense of reverence and awe in his followers for God and for him. If you consider about leaders in world history, usually when they passed away, their subordinates will just go back to their own practice in the past instead of following his willingness or his teachings again. Well, when I was learning about um, the history of, uh, of Islam and also the biography of Prophet Muhammad, what really amazed me is that after Prophet Muhammad passed away, people from the Arab Peninsula not only accepted Islam, I mean his teachings, but also they tried very hard to spread uh, Islam to a greater extent and they got, very, they got a very successful result actually. And this is rarely seen in world history and I was wondering what, made, what makes that such a lot of people coming from different backgrounds and having different social rituals accept Islam at that time. I think firstly and most intuitively this teaching must be very good for them. I mean, benefit them, not only their uh, material wealth, but also in terms of their spiritual values. And that made me think about uh, the, the soft power of Islam. Back in China at the moment, I think most of the people tend to focus on their material wealth because we have been so poor um, 30 years ago. So now, after we open up, 
people just try to make money and be practical uh, to, a, uh, to a great extent. But there are also many people, especially those belong to the young generation, complain about um, the growing mercantile uh, atmosphere of China. They want to see how did we lose our moral values and how can we uh, increase the moral value of the whole society. And in my opinion, even if you don't really convert to Islam, you can learn a lot from Islamic teachings about how to solve social conflicts, how to deal with, um, how, to, um, how to implement uh, the redistribution of, of wealth and things like that. Um, we can learn such kind of things, not only from the biography of Prophet Muhammad, but also from the practice of different Islamic regimes in history. And thirdly, well, I think all over the world, now there is a lack of self-power, there is a lack of cultural attractiveness, there is a lack of moral disciplines uh, in, our human, uh, in our human society. Um, when, and, and that is exactly what I want to get from learning about Islam. With regards to ethics, his is one that forbid it lying and deceit, chiding of orphans, ignoring beggars, as well as the requests of the needy. I embraced Islam 30 years ago. I was given a book about Islam, which was a huge surprise for me, as I didn't know Allah was God, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a prophet, and Quran was the last revelation from God. I don't really remember what I thought, but it was a big surprise that this actually was a revelation and believed in the same scriptures sent before, like confirmation of other scriptures. So it catched my attention that this was something, a surprise to what I was told. So I started to read and read and it attracted me by its message. and. Uh, I was not prepared for the, that I will become Muslim. It was not in my mind. It was a kind of fascination by the message of purity, of righteousness, and the very strong voice, which is not from human being. So even maybe I didn't like it all the time because it was very shaking, <laughs> make me very high and about paradise and its treasures. And in another minute, it was another part of responsibility of this life. At Judgment Day, I will be asked about my purpose of living. So this encouraged me to read more and more. And it was the Prophet himself, peace be upon him, who was the cause that I embraced Islam. By his beautiful character, his humility, his sacrifices, and his sense of purity, of sincerity, of love. It was something like a person I never seen before, which had a, another message, which reached beyond something cultural for me, something which inspired me to change all my life and to look at things differently with another perception. Uh, I don't think I was a kind of religious person, but open. I mean, uh, humbling out of the fact that, uh, about eternity, there are another perception of something absolute and infinitive beyond our brain and our understanding. So I think I was standing and started to asked myself, what is this message about except to purify me? Fault finding, mocking or slandering others, extortion, or anything that generally creates ill will between people were generally forbidden or strongly discouraged. Any person who wants to refine himself, any person who wants to, perf uh, to perfect himself, to perfect his character, needs to look no further than to that of Sayyidina Muhammad You find a perfect example of a father, a perfect example of a husband, a perfect example of a military leader, 
a perfect example of a preacher, a perfect example of a person, a merchant, any aspect of life. Along the path of human life, only a few managed to leave a mark. You were sent by Allah for dead souls and hearts to revive. Today your compassion, wisdom, and teachings help us survive. Prophet Muhammad, your love in our heart shall always thrive. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah.